Hey developers, today we're going to install Tailwind on a brand new Vue app, a brand new React app, and a brand new Angular app, and I'm going to show you how to do that for all three of them. Hey, and if you came here to learn Tailwind and you just want to learn it for React or Angular, I'll put timestamps in the description below so you can kind of jump around. Hey, and if you guys like these type of videos, my name is Eric. I do videos on Vue.js, React, Angular. Make sure you click that like button, click that subscribe button. That really helps me out as well. All right, so let's just go ahead and jump on into the video. So if you don't know, Tailwind CSS is a utility class library for, for uh, CSS. It makes it really easy to, to create CSS quickly by using these utility classes like Flex, PT4, Text Center. And here is the homepage. Now, so I was gonna go ahead and start with Vue.js and we're gonna get Tailwind working in Vue. All right, so let's talk about getting Vue 2 or Vue 3 up and running with Tailwind. Now, you're gonna have different installations if you're using Vue 2 or Vue 3. So right now, I have a Vue 3 app up and running right here. And so the best way of getting Vue 3 up and running is actually to use the official documentation. If you're using Vue 2, you can use the plugin for Tailwind, that seems to work pretty well. When I tried it using Vue 3, I got some weird errors. The official documentation is probably the best bet. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get it up and running with Vue 3. But if you're on Vue 2, you can just type in Vue add Tailwind and that will go ahead and install it from you. And you just do that inside the folder for your Vue 2 app. So in this Vue 3 app to get up and running, uh, if you look in the documentation, they have an install CSS with Vue 3 and Vite. This actually doesn't quite work for me when I was actually trying this out in installing this install Tailwind via, via NPM, I got an error and this error was related to post CSS. Now in the latest version of Vue 3, it doesn't support post CSS 8. So you have to use the compatibility build to get it working. I know that's a little confusing, but I'll make sure I put a link in the description below to both of this documentation so you don't run into the same problems I did. If you're in Vue 3, use the compatibility version until the Vue 3 maintainers upgrade post CSS to work with 8. So to do that, that basically you need to do this npm install right here or if you ran into the problem and you got this error you have to uninstall tailwind first just go and npm install tailwind like this i'm just going to copy and paste it and this will go ahead and install everything you need the compatibility version of tailwind so this will just take a moment okay so it's install tailwind post css these are just kind of utilities that you need to be able to work with with Tailwind and be able to, for it to clean up the CSS afterward. And then I would do is just go back over to the official documentation and then do everything it says here. So I'm gonna do this npx tailwind init. And what this does is it goes ahead and it creates a couple of files for us, this tailwind config file and post CSS config. So here's the uh, tailwind config file and the post CSS config. And what you can do is if you want to configure it to remove unused styles in production, you just need to copy and paste this purge right here. So I'm going to do that. So I have this purge in place. And then you have to make sure that you essentially uh, include these tailwind base and components inside your CSS. And the easiest way to do that is you create a new file in your source folder called index.css copy and paste it in, save it in, and then in the main file, you just wanna import it in. So import, and that should make it so when the app start that starts that this Tailwind gets initialized. One trick I always use when I'm using Tailwind is I make sure I have the Tailwind extension installed in my VS Code, that's this one right here. And this allows you to have auto completion of Tailwind utility classes. It just makes things much easier. A quick pro tip though, is after you start a new app, and you make sure you install the Tailwind config file and then do a restart of VS Code. And if you hit Control Shift P, I think it's Command Shift P and Mac, you can do developer reload window and that will reload the window for you. So, and don't worry about this little message. I'm using Synthwave 84 before you ask what theme I'm using. That's what makes it glow. All right, so if I did everything right, Tailwind should be up and running. So I just need to do npm run serve. And while it's doing that, I'm gonna go into my app view and do a little cleanup, uh, delete out the hello world component. And I don't have any errors in the console band down here. So I'm gonna local, open up localhost 8080. Cool, so looks like it's working. Um, that looks right. I can also, one other way to check to make sure Tailwind's working is you can click on it and then go and look at the CSS. So if I do this correctly, there it is. Down here at the bottom, I can click this little CLS button and then I can just start typing stuff. And I can change, I can add or subtract 
different classes just to make sure it looks okay. And yeah, it looks like it's working. Cool. So now we have Tailwind CSS up and working inside View. If you guys have questions on this, leave a comment, but let's go ahead and go into our next section. Okay, so we are now in a React app. I went ahead and installed it with npx create React app and then the Tailwind example and went ahead and created it. This is brand new out of the box. So let's see how we can add Tailwind to a React app quickly. So uh, if you look in the official documentation, it's really simple. After you create the app, you just need to install all this stuff in NPM. So it's Tailwind CSS, NPM, Tailwind CSS, PSCS, Campat, a bunch of different libraries. So this just take a moment and it should install. Okay, so went ahead and installed. And now, uh, unlike Vue, where using the compatibility build is probably your best bet, the version of Create React app as of this recording doesn't support post CSS 8. So really they recommend that you install Krakow. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And that's a way that we can override some things. So I'm gonna install it. And basically it says, since Create React app doesn't put support, doesn't let you override post CSS configurations natively, we also need to install Krakow to be able to configure Tailwind. So we'll just give this a minute. Okay, so it's installed. And now we just need to do a couple of changes to the start, build, and test inside our package JSON. So we'll go and open our package JSON. We'll look for our start, build, and test. And what I like to do is just copy and paste them in here and delete the duplicate start, build, and tests. Um, don't worry about this little squiggly line. This is just a part of uh, a C spell, which I have installed. And then it also says you need to create a Krakow config file and add the Tailwind CSS and auto prefixer. So I'm going to copy and paste this and I'm just gonna put it into a new file in the root, which I think will be right here. And I'll call it krakowconfig.js. And then it says you need to create your own configuration file. So do an npm uh, npx tailwind init. So I'll do that down here. So it'll go ahead and create this uh, tailwind config.js file. And that's fine. And then it says to add this purge in here. So I'm gonna go open the tailwind. By the way, if I'm going too quickly, make sure you can pause this so you can see what I'm doing. But I'm just essentially following the instructions here blindly, but I assume that these instructions are correct. And then you need to include Tailwind CSS in your index uh, source file. So you can go into this index.css file. It's in the source folder and just copy and paste this in there. And then it says you need imported in. So right now this file is already in the source index file and make, just make sure that it's imported in somewhere. So you can see your app CSS is imported, but not that one. So I can, you can look here, it says imported into your index.js file, actually not this one. Okay, so it's already imported in, so we don't have to do that. And that should be it. So let's see if this works. I'm gonna run npm run start, and this will go ahead and run the Krakow start instead of our other React start that we had before, starting the development server. Okay, cool, so it loaded, but let's see if we have some styles that we can put in here. So I'm gonna look in our app.js folder. Here's a bunch of stuff. I'm just gonna delete most of it. And I'm gonna add a hello world. Hello world, and I'm add some class names, class name, and we're gonna have that equal flex. Oh, one other thing to do, you can see right here I'm typing text, but I'm not getting any auto completion. So I have a plugin called Entailwind CSS IntelliSense, but it's not working. So one thing you should do is after you, anytime you install or create a new app, is just go ahead and reload the browser. So I'm going to open this up, I'm gonna stop my app. I'm gonna run npm, well, basically I'm going to hit control shift P or, or if you're a Mac, I think it's command shift P. I'm gonna choose developer reload window. And then this should reload my window. And I'm gonna run npm start again. And this should run Krakow start. And instead, this time I'm gonna look at the class name and see if it detects my uh, IntelliSense. So I'm going to put in text. 
there it is. So now I have IntelliSense. I'm going to do 8XL and I'll make it purple. Purple 800. I'm going to save it. It's going to reload. Cool. So here it is. Looks like it's working. I got my hello world here. And yeah, so we are done. If you guys have any questions or comments on this, leave a comment below. But yeah, it's just pretty simple. You just need to uh, install, just install this Krakow, get it up and running, and it works great in React. All right, so let's go ahead and get Angular up and running with Tailwind. Now there's two ways to do this. So if you're using a version of Angular less than 11.2, there's one way you should do it. And if you're using 11.2 or greater, there's a new way to do it. So basically 11.2 of Angular added in really great Tailwind support which made this process way easier than it was in the past. I actually did a video in the past where I had to do a bunch of crazy things and it, uh, I had to like update a, a ton of, of, of um, things in the Angular JSON file, but you no longer have to do that. So I, as of this recording, I actually installed, this is an Angular 11.2 app. So if you look at the package.json, you can see here it's 11.2, 11.2. So this is the latest. So we're going to show you, I'm going to show you how to get this up and running with Angular 11.2. But if you are using an older version of Angular, I have, I found this really great article in dev.2. I actually couldn't find the official documentation inside the Tailwind website. If you go into the documentation and then go into the installation part, you can see it has next view Laravel, but doesn't have Angular listed, which is too bad. I couldn't find it anywhere, but this, this Dev2 article makes it really simple to do. Um, so it tells you a little bit about the disadvantages, tailwind, advantages, and how to get up and running. So if you're using a version less than 11.2, then you just need to do this ng add ng neat tailwind. And that'll ask you, it'll even ask you if you want to add in some plugins like the forms and typography, which I'm not going to get into this video, but you can add plugins for tailwind. And then you just have to add in this in the style.css. However, if you are on a newer version, 11.2 or greater, you just need to do this. So we're going to follow these instructions. We're going to npm install dash tailwind like this. And this will just take a moment. Now this is in the root folder of our Angular app. Okay, so that's installed. And then if you want to, you can install the typography and forms. We're not going to do that. And then we need to create a tailwind config file, which uh, you can do it through npx tailwind init. That's how I always do it. It doesn't mention that in here. You, you could just create a copy and paste this if you wanted. This will just take a moment. All right, so that created this tailwind config file right here in the root of our folder. Don't worry about this. And you want to be able to purge values out. So you can add this content in here into this purge. So what I do here is I'm just gonna copy and paste this whole purge object might be easier. Okay. So this will be able to purge and this, what happens here is once the app loads and uh, we build for production that it gets rid of unused content that we don't need. If you're using plugins, then you'll need to uh, change this require here, tailwind to uh, this um, require here to add them in. Then you need to add into your style CSS file. So we'll go in this. All right, since we're using SAS, we just need to import in our Tailwind CSS like this inside our style.sass file. If we're not using SAS, we just import it in like this. We can go ahead and see if it's working. So let's let's go ahead and start our app. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run npm or ng uh, s for serve. And that's how you usually start an Angular app. And then we can go into our app.component dot TypeScript file. And this is our TypeScript, but if we look at the HTML, here it is. And we have a whole bunch of CSS we could probably just delete because we're not going to use any of this. And I'm just going to do an H3 here. Let's see here, H3, a hello world. And I guess uh, one thing I always like to do, by the way, is after I install Tailwind, I make sure that the Tailwind extension is running this Tailwind uh, IntelliSense extension. And this allows us to have like auto completion when we're writing in VS Code. And since I just installed everything, I'll need to do a quick reload of our app. So I'm going to reload this. 
Uh, by the way, do Control Shift P and look for Developer Reload, and it's reloaded. And now I can run ng serve, and once and this will just take a moment here. And also, would you like to enable? You can't see this, but it's just giving me a message about Angular Language Services. I'm just going to enable it. So let's just take a moment. Okay, all right. I went ahead and updated it. Um, by the way, I just noticed that you don't actually need the semicolons here. So I went and deleted these and it went ahead and, and ran. Now, if I go to our app component, I wanna make sure this will work. So I'm going to, first I'm gonna local host, open this in 4200. There's my normal hello world, but let's see if we can make this look better. I'm gonna put a class, I'm gonna put text uh, nine, XL and I'm gonna make it uh, orange. Well, I'll do it green, green 800. I'm gonna save it. Cool, so it looks like it's working correctly. So now we have been able to get Angular, Vue and React working with Tailwind. Uh, it was really simple to do pretty much for all three of them. There was a few gotchas with Vue because of compatibility issues with PostCSS 8, but it was just a little Googling. I was able to figure that out. I think overall, probably Tailwind is the easiest to install in, in Angular and Vue. React takes a few extra steps. So let me know if you if you installed uh, Tailwind any different way. Leave a comment below. I really appreciate it. Thanks.